well. Yesterday was our first setup day here at David's tent. Yesterday morning, there was nothing but grass here in this field. At the end of Yom Kippur, we're gonna strike up the band and play 40 days of continuous love songs to Jesus. And so I just can't, I can't wait. David's tent is now a reality. It just completely blows me away. The presence of the Lord is just so thick and amazing. The rallying cry, just praise for 40 days. It's just been an amazing experience, and God has been uh, praised like I've never seen praised before. Day and night, continuously, 24-7, it's unheard of. Being a part of David's Tent has been a real privilege. David's Tent has been just one of the most incredible experiences. We've been having an incredible time. And we were like, I am forever changed. Is the presence by the palace in the capital city. It's amazing. Let's turn the speakers towards Obama's house and just blast worship. As we were worshiping, we would just see the helicopter fly in, pick up President Obama, fly out, or flew directly over the tent, and it got pretty loud. It's not really something that can be easily explained. It just kind of blows all the circuits in your brain. But it's a really good feeling. <laughs> And the foolishness of lavishing our affection on Jesus, it's going to change the world. You know, David's tent, the story starts in the prayer closet. The second to that, it actually starts right here, the Faith in Action building. And I met with Reverend Mahoney actually right here in this living room. We had joked about the White House ellipse. Jason came up to me and I heard a request I've never heard before. And that was, can you get a permit for 40 days and nights of continuous praise and worship? It's unheard of. Everything's gone. Lincoln Memorial, gone. The mall, gone. McPherson Square, gone. 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 So God had one place that he chose all the tribes to come together to worship him and where he would dwell. David, he's the guy. King David, generations later, that finally X marks the spot. He conquers the land from the Jebusites, which is now known as Jerusalem, sets up his palace there, and he brings the ark of the presence of the Lord into Jerusalem, where God desires to dwell. Puts the ark underneath a tent right beside his palace, and finally, it's like in the heart of God, you can just sense this, Oh, I'm home. I'm central. This is where I desired to dwell the whole time. And then David goes one step further and he hires over 4,000 musicians, singers, and worshipers to specifically minister to the Lord in song, day and night, continuously, 24-7, for the rest of the 33-year length of his reign in Jerusalem. You name any place that the National Park Service had, it was gone. And then suddenly out of the back room, Reverend Mahoney, the ellipse is open. And I mean, are you kidding? Like it's never open. You can never do anything there. And that actually is connected to White House property. People apply for the permits a year ahead of time. And this was several months uh, before the election. And so I said, I'm, f I'm filling it out. The ellipse is open. And with those words, God moved us from McPherson Square, right central, off of Obama's back porch. Like David, we thought, you know what? Let's worship Jesus and throne him 24-7 at the highest executive office in our land. And so this is where we get the name David's Tent DC, is the presence by the palace in the capital city, because we know that the Lord desires to be central in our lives. And when he is center, he's like, oh yeah, that's where I desire to dwell. So we're here on the White House lips. So we have the White House over there. Behind me is the Department of Commerce, the Department of the Treasury. And to my left is the Washington Monument. And it's just the center of the nation's capital next to the seat of executive power. This is where everything happens, where all, all of the worship happens. Uh, you know, we have the Secret Service right over here uh, guarding this area. And uh, yeah, but right in between, in the middle of this city, the heart of this city, um, praise went up to Jesus from here. When you go to a worship service, um, a lot of times there will be speaking and a whole message involved and even prayer led from the front, but with David's tent there was no speaker, no prayer led from the front, just worship. It just 
flowed directly into the next worship leader sometimes. If you weren't paying attention or didn't have your eyes open, you wouldn't see that actually the worship leader had changed at the, um, after two hours and it just continues, and then it continues even some more, and then the sun's going up and the sun's going down, and it's still, it's still going. It never stops. <laughs> some worship in the daytime, but the night is special. The rallying cry, just praise for 40 days. It was awesome to watch this mantra echo across America. When I heard him say that he wanted to make it exclusively worship for the 40 days leading up to the election, at first I thought, oh my goodness, you know, we need prayer if my people will humble themselves and pray. But then I realized, as I mulled it over, I thought, you know, to be there in a public place like that, right next to the, the president's palace, so to say, that if there was some of the prayer like we would hear uh, from different people that, that we know that are crying out to God and have uh, political opinions and so forth, uh, it, it, it could be a nasty mess instead of being the blessing that it was. We worship you in spirit and truth. It all belongs to you. Yes, it all The nation was hurting. To you. And David basically said, it all worship is what will save the nation. And as we know in the Bible, that that's exactly what happened. We've been praying, many people have been praying for many years here on the hill. And uh, this is a real blessing to all of us that have prayed because I believe this is the turning point. If we can have this continue to grow, I can see it being an anchor to that prayer movement and having, having revival like so many have cried out to God for, um, but of a different kind than we've ever had before in any of the other awakenings we've had in America. So I, all I can say is thank you, Lord. This is a blessing. A young man came up the back of the tent and uh, clearly, you know, was curious as to what was going on. As we began to talk, he, he pointed to the people up at the front. He asked me, and he said, what's, what's the reason for that? Like, what, what do they hope to accomplish? Was that for, you know, for the forgiveness of sin? Was it for, um, you know, if you try to get something to happen, to provoke God to do something? And, and it hit me like just as a piece of revelation in my own heart, like, you know, this whole tent, everything, it was simply about worshiping Jesus because he's worthy. The truth of it was, is we didn't come out here to ask God to do anything for us. We came out here to bless him, to be a blessing to him because he was worthy and because we loved him. Because we just know that if our worship is still self-centered, that we're still doing it to get something for ourselves, then somehow or another we're still missing it. As we read in the book of Revelation, it's just worthy as the Lamb that was slain to receive all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. It's just about Him. So vertical worship, worshiping just for the purpose of the Lord is different than worshiping in front of people and trying to engage a crowd. And it takes you to a different place of like, just focusing on the Holy Spirit, on God, and just the reality of like, He is in heaven and He is in us at the same time. And that just, like think about that for two hours and worship Him in it, and it blows all your, I mean literally it's like, I my brain, can't function anymore and my spirit just has to take over which is why it's hard to explain it in words because it's it's not really something that can be easily explained it just kind of blows all the circuits in your brain but it's a really good feeling <laughs> everybody should do it <laughs> 
I've been leading worship for a long time in lots of churches. And um, when we lead worship in a public place like David's tent, we are completely focused on the Lord and we are just enthroning Him on our praise. We are building a throne of praise for Him. Yeah, just people coming into worship with no agenda, no, no words coming out that's man's opinion or anything, just worshiping Jesus. So the unity in that made everybody come together. Um, and I, I found it fascinating. And, uh, you know, the Bible says if we don't worship, even the rocks will cry out. And so you can almost feel nature. You can almost feel everything responding to the presence of the Lord, to the worship of the Lord. It's, re it's really amazing. And we even had some times where it was a cloudy, cloudy day, and the worship was really, really amazing. It's high praise, and the clouds would literally open up right over the tent. And there, people were taking pictures of it. They were like, wow, that's wild. <laughs> it's amazing. Jesus, you are worthy. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. I saw God unifying a nation around one central theme of just Jesus. Just worshiping Jesus, just praising Him because He was worthy. I saw that from all of the worship teams that emailed us. They just wanted to worship. They're like, please, let me worship. Some people came in town from all across the nation. They quit like their jobs or they took off time from work just to come in for a week or two weeks or however long they were here just to worship Jesus. You can see as you're talking to them beforehand, their perspectives would change. Some of them had never led worship for two hours ever. They had come from a church where they would lead for 30 minutes and then the pastor would stand up to preach. And so to have them come and give their time, because the Lord is worthy, we're gonna lead and sing, we're gonna lead worship and sing to him for two hours was a blessing. And it was so awesome to see that perspective change and that paradigm shift in a whole body. Yeah, David's tent was just a place where everybody could come and worship. It didn't matter who you were or what you, how you worshipped. And it was a place that was opened and welcoming for deaf people um, to worship in ASL and freely express themselves and worship the deaf way. Some people might view David's tent, oh, it was for those people who believe only, but really it wasn't. David's tent welcomed everyone. That word love was the most important thing. That place you would feel love and loved when you go. These watches were actually led by the deaf people and I was interpreting for the hearing people. They were actually leading in sign language and I was going around and speaking for the people like you and me that can hear. Um, and that was what was different about David's tent and the ASL watches that these deaf girls <laughs> and men led. We had people from all different racial backgrounds, we had Hispanic teams, Black gospel choirs, Asian worship teams. We had a band come from Russia. We had a worship leader from Wales. It was just incredible to see just the diversity, but at the same time, they were so united in that one purpose of just loving Jesus. We had people from, first of all, all 50 states came, 166 different worship teams. The family of God from around America came together under one tent. But it wasn't like we could stage it to happen. Like, let's make sure we have the white, the yellow, the brown, the black face all on the stage at the same time. There's no way that we could do that, but it was authentic. It just happened because Jesus did it. Just praise for 40 days was something that 
everyone could agree upon, and it was thrilling to watch it happen. We know there's so much blessing in the place of unity, and watching the diverse and yet unified lamp of worship here, honestly, it gave me a lot of hope for America. Big storm moving in that has gathered the attention of a lot of people here in Narragansett, Rhode Island. We are running out of real estate here in Narragansett. I'm surge. Hi, well, this is Jason Hershey, again coming to you from Washington, D.C. Sorry to interrupt the webcast tonight, but we just want to show you what's happening at the White House Ellipse. We've moved the event, obviously, to Faith Tabernacle Church on Capitol Hill, but we've kept people here praying the whole time. And so if you look over here to, to our right over here, you'll see an empty skeleton of a tent. The inside that van right now, we have intercessors praying and worshiping, holding the land until the storm passes and we can come back here and once again occupy the tent and the White House Ellipse. You're right here, if you look right there, that's the empty skeleton of a tent. We took the, the canopy off of it, the canvas, so that the wind wouldn't catch it and turn it into David's kite rather than David's tent. And in here we have the intercessors right now. There's, here's an open Bible right here we have Luke, right here, 18 says, it's the parable of the persistent widow. We just got to keep going, right? You just got to keep going. Uh, personally, my knee was healed one night during uh, Hurricane Sandy came through the path where we actually were here in D.C. While we were in the van, praying in the spirit, committing to the Lord, reading through the scriptures, and I can dance again, which I'm so happy about because... I love dancing before the Lord because He's so worthy. We exalt you, Exciting news for you guys. We're getting ready to move back out. Actually, tonight, our 7 to 9 p.m. set is going to be our last set here at Faith Tabernacle Church. After the 9 p.m. set, we're going to be moving back out to the ellipse and we're going to start with the night watch out there. I think we're going to see revival as a result of unity and worship in the body of Christ, and especially outside the four walls of the church. I think the four walls of our church buildings have kept us apart. As, as parts of the body coming together in unity. So I think it's really cool because there's times you're in the tent, there's no walls. And, and even when it's, they're, they're walls, they're, they're very thin and movable. And um, to have the sounds of love and the sound of God's love flowing down the streets, I don't know who else heard that, but man, it could pierce into the souls of people. If it was in a church building, it's up on a you know, back block somewhere, it wouldn't have happened. The Secret Service, agents or the officers, they'll come over over to David's tent and they'll use the restrooms and they'll just get hit by the Lord's love. And just today we had someone, a Secret Service agent, came and he just listened for like 30 minutes. He kept on coming back and I just got to share about what we were doing, just worshiping the Lord. Yeah, I just felt called to go, and I quit my job three weeks ago, and the Lord told me to go, and so I'm here. So me and my friend Gigi saw this lady walking with a cane, and we decided we should pray for her. So we walk up to her, ask if we could pray that she would be able to walk normally. And my friend Gigi, as we were praying and asking God that we would just get pictures in our head from him about what's wrong and what we can pray for, she saw a picture in her head of her knee and how there was no cartilage behind her knee. So we prayed that that would come to life, that she would have that cartilage and be able to walk normally. It happened the instant we prayed for it. She said she felt better. She could jump up and down. Afterwards, Gigi also saw a picture in her head from the Lord of 
her spine and how the vertebrae were out of place and that God wanted to put them right back in order. So we prayed that into life and it happened. She could do everything totally normal. I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand, my ankles were swollen and it was shooting pain from the bottom of my heel all the way up to my hips. And so volunteering, I was sitting down all day and I was really bummed I couldn't do anything. And then from the seven to nine set, which was the corporate worship set, I just walked right into the tent and just started to worship, just not thinking about my pain at all. And I was completely healed um, just through worshiping Jesus. Yeah, this little lady came over to me and just asked me um, what was going on. And so I was just telling her and she was just like getting teary eyed as I'm telling her and I was like, well, okay, I don't know what's going on, right? So I just asked her if I could pray for her. And she was like, yes, yes, please pray for me. Like, I love Jesus. So I was like, okay. So I prayed for her and she just like, I don't know like what was happening, but she just like started breaking down in tears. And like, I ended up just like holding her while she cried. And she was like sobbing and just like totally like encountering the Holy Spirit. But the first day she was at the tent, she prayed for this lady who was on a cane. And they had parked their car really far away, so they had taken a cab over so she could get there. But she prayed for this lady who was on a cane. The lady got completely healed, started dancing. She's like 82 years old. And the daughter said, Mom, we're going to get the cab. She goes, no, I'm walking. She put her cane on her arm and started to walk down Constitution Avenue. I really like the idea of continuous worship. Uh, I think that's just amazing that uninterrupted 40 days of worship to uh, the Almighty is just amazing. And I, I see it as kind of like dropping a stone in a pond there and the ellipse, and it's now rippling out across the country. It was a historic event. It had never happened before. The National Park Service was breaking new ground. And to see the Christ-like witness of the team involved with that, uh, with all of the National Park Service, Secret Service, law enforcement. Uh, it was really beautiful and a powerful witness. Come back to the Father. It's never too late. It's never too late. Come back to the Father. All your sons and daughters. I will be very surprised if there are, if we don't see David's tent like operations in capital cities across our nation from now until the Lord comes back. I'll be very surprised. Can't you see this happening in every city in America? Praise and worship going on 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, with God's people coming from a variety of different churches and bringing what they have to offer to make, to make a, a time of worship that's unbelievable. Just watching a ragtag group of guys get together and say, Jesus should be adored from DC. Why not? Why not next to the White House? Let's turn the speakers towards Obama's house and just blast worship. I mean, I love that. And it's just, seriously, it's stirred our hearts around the world. We, we, we have, I believe that, that even this expression of, like I was saying, Malachi 111, Amos 911, you know, the restoration of David's tent, it's about, the, 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 the incense of worship being released and the whole like restoration of the walking in the cool of the day with God. I mean, if these guys can do it, anybody can do it. And the foolishness of lavishing our affection on Jesus, it's going to change the world because he's so worthy. He's so worthy of everything we can give. And I believe this is just the very beginnings. This is the very beginnings of the extravagant adoration of worship that's going to be raised up from this city. Most of us have always known DC has been the place where the tribes go up to make law, like Congress. This is a place of a governmental city. But you know, the, the David's Tent team, the team that facilitated this event, we didn't move here just for a 40-day event. In our hearts, we have one desire from here, and that's to do what, what we saw God do in the last 40 days and to see that go 365, that this city would be known as the place where we gather as a nation to praise the name of the Lord. And then, then from that place, we make law.